Stop drinking that morning cup of coffee they're currently grabbing right now. It's currently hijacking your brain and setting you to crash by 3 p.m. today. Hi, I'm Dr. Ingi, and in the next seven minutes, I'm going to show you when exactly you should be taking your first cup of coffee and when you should be stopping it. And all of this is actually evidence-based science, and I'm going to explain to you what's actually happening in your body and in your brain. So here's what most people do. Right, the first thing in the morning when the alarm goes off and their feet hits the floor, they have the first cup of coffee in their hands by the first 10 to 15 minutes. Now, that feels necessary, right? You feel like you need it, but that's the problem. Your body already has a built-in energy system or a built-in alarm clock that kicks in automatically when you wake up. And by chugging coffee immediately, you are actually wasting your coffee and you're blocking your brain from actually working properly. So first, let me introduce you to something known as cortisol. Now, this is your body's built-in alarm clock. Within the first 30 to 45 minutes of waking up, your body releases a massive wave of cortisol. Now, most people think that cortisol is just a, some sort of stress hormone, but that's just part of the function of cortisol. The main function of cortisol is actually to wake you up in the morning. It's something like your body's internal espresso shot. So here's what cortisol does when you wake up. First, it gives you energy by releasing stored sugar into your blood, causing that surge, there, causing your brain to wake up. Secondly, it makes your brain more alert and focused. And third of all, it tells almost every cell in your body, hey, it's time to wake up, it's time to get going. This cortisol wave peaks about 30 to 45 minutes after you wake up. Then, slowly it starts to come back down. And here's the key, all of this happens automatically. You don't actually need to do anything. Your body has been doing this perfectly for your entire life. So when you start drinking coffee right away after you start waking up, you're actually dumping caffeine on top of a huge cortisol wave that's already building. It's like adding more water into the bathtub that's already overflowing. So there are studies that show that cortisol increases by 50 to 160% in the first 30 minutes after waking up. And this research comes from the University of Oklahoma Health Science Center. Now let's talk about adenosine, which is a hormone most people don't actually talk about. Now think of adenosine as your brain's sleepiness chemical. Now the longer you're awake during the day, the more adenosine builds up in your brain. It's like a fog that gradually makes you more and more tired as time goes by. When you sleep at night, your brain actually clears up most of the adenosine fog. But here's what most people don't know. When you first wake up in the morning, there is still some leftover adenosine hanging around in your brain. So it takes roughly about one and a half to two hours, 120 minutes, for your brain to fully clear out adenosine. And here's when the coffee should come in. Caffeine is like a blocker. Now imagine adenosine trying to plug into your brain cells, you know, trying to make you sleepy, but caffeine jumps in straight away and blocks those plugs. That is why coffee makes you feel alert. It's actually blocking the sleepy signal. But if you drink coffee when there's still a little bit of adenosine in your system, you're actually blocking stuff that should have naturally cleared out on its own. And when you're taking coffee when there's, you have not much adenosine, you're actually wasting a cup of coffee. That means that by noon, you don't have sufficient caffeine to block the adenosine that's actually building up. Now, there's a research from the University of Zurich that finally finds that adenosine takes roughly about 90 minutes to 120 minutes to clear after waking up before your first cup of coffee. So here is why the timing is perfect. The first reason, your cortisol has already done its job, it's peaked, giving you natural energy and it's starting to come down. Now, coffee can actually boost you up again instead of wasting its effects. Reason number two, your brain has cleared out the old adenosine fog from yesterday. So when adenosine is actually picking up and caffeine is actually blocking your adenosine, it's actually blocking fresh adenosine from today, making it way more effective. Reason number three, you get sustained energy throughout the entire day. Instead of spiking immediately and then crashing by noon, now you have created a smooth energy curve that lasts until afternoon. A massive study of over 40,000 people published in January 2025 found that drinking coffee in the morning before noon reduced the risk of dying early by 16%. So caffeine timing actually affects your health. So now we know when to take your first cup of coffee. Let's talk about when not to drink coffee. Rule number one, no coffee after 2 p.m. Now, caffeine stays in your system for roughly about five to six hours, and it has a half-life of five hours. So if you drink coffee at 4 p.m., half of that caffeine is still in your system by 9 p.m., right when you're supposed to be winding down for sleep. Rule number two, not immediately after you wake up. So we've covered this. You're actually wasting the coffee's power when your cortisol is already high. Rule number three, not when you're super stressed out. Coffee actually increases cortisol even more. So if you're really stressed out and you're in a high cortisol state, adding coffee is like throwing gasoline on fire. 
All right, so here's your exact action plan starting tomorrow. Step one, when you wake up, let's give an example. Let's say you wake up at 6 a.m. in the morning. The first thing you should do is to go out and get some sunlight in your eyes. So look outside, you know, from your bedroom or even go outdoors for roughly about five minutes. Secondly, you should drink a big glass of water to hydrate yourself and then move around a little, you know, stretch, walk, get moving. You don't actually have to hit the gym so early in the morning. So all of this actually helps cortisol do its job even better. Wait roughly about 90 minutes to 120 minutes before your first cup of coffee. So you should do your normal routine. Now you feel a little bit more refreshed. And when you feel that you are at the peak alertness, that is the green light for your first cup of coffee. Step three, enjoy your first cup of coffee roughly about two hours after you've gotten up. Well, one or two cups is ideal, don't take too much. And you notice that over time, it works so much better throughout the entire day. Your energy is more smooth and it's more sustained. Step four, avoid drinking coffee after 2 p.m. Now, this is important because it helps protect your sleep tonight, which makes tomorrow morning even better. So now you have changed your coffee drinking routine. So what should you expect within the first week? Now, the first three to four days might feel really weird. You might miss that immediate coffee ritual. But by day five to day seven, most people report feeling more naturally energized in the morning and having better energy throughout the entire afternoon. So your body actually just needs time to readjust. So here's my challenge to you. Now try the 90 minute rule for the first week. That's it, just for seven days. And I guarantee you definitely feel the difference. You wake up with more natural energy, your coffee will actually feel stronger and you won't have that brutal afternoon crash. So science isn't about complicated biohacking or expensive supplements. It's about understanding how your body actually works and it makes simple, smart changes around your daily rituals and your daily habits. Drop a comment below and tell me, what time do you actually usually drink your first cup of coffee? And are you willing to try waiting 90 minutes? If you want more evidence-based strategies like this, no BS, just real science explained simply, hit the subscribe button and hit that no notification button bell. I'm Dr. Inky and I'll see you tomorrow. Stay safe, stay healthy, and most importantly, stay optimized.